people have the the idea that there isn't talent in Guyana. Yes. You know, sometimes you make garments, people wear it and they're like, oh, you got a hair? And, <laughs> <laughs> and I want to dispel this narrative that quality things are not made in Guyana. They are. Uh, growing up, I used to watch my mother sew. That's kind of how I learned, you know, how to sew. And um, going to school, I had an interesting style. And, you know, you would spend so much money on clothing, and then you show up and you see other people wearing the same things that you would be wearing. And, you know, I just wanted to be different. Um, it was just something that I was really good at. Um, my sister would always encourage me and say, you know, Keisha, you should get into fashion. You should probably do Guyana Fashion Week. But um, for me, I didn't think I could make a career out of it. I, at that time, wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a lawyer. I went to UG and... <laughs> Yeah, I went to UG, I did social work, and I did sociology, and after graduating, I couldn't find a job. But whilst at university, I would make promotional outfits for Digicel and banks, and you know, after leaving, I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to make this passion into a career. I love Guyana, and I believe in service. Not everybody, would have been as fortunate as I was to study abroad and pursue their dreams in fashion. So I felt like I wanted to come back home and kind of collaborate and teach some of the things that I would have learned and work with other creatives so that, you know, the creative industry here could grow. So I left in 2016 to pursue my degree in fashion designs because I wanted a Caribbean experience. I, um, I had attended Parsons in Manhattan and I learned so much from just my year of being there, but I wanted my clothing, I guess, at that time to be reflective of who we were as Caribbean people. Trinidad has one of the thrive in the fashion industries within the Caribbean region and I learned so much there. I grew as a person. I grew as a fashion designer there. Um, and one of the things I learned is how, well, actually I observed how they were so proud of being Trinidadian, how they were so proud of their culture, um, of their creative industry, especially my industry, fashion. It was supported by the people. Like it's a, it's a big flex there to be wearing a Caribbean designer's outfit, yes. So if, you, if you're wearing um, something from Mailing or The Cloth or Claudia Pecas, like that's a big deal, you know? And you really don't find that here. There were so many workshops and different things available to people in the creative industry, fashion, and designers collaborated. They worked together. They understood that in order for the industry to move forward, they wanted and needed to work together. And that's one of the things that I wanted to bring back home or I guess take away from my experience studying there. Moonlight Stories is important to me because growing up, um, when we had blackout, we used to have blackout a lot. <laughs> My parents would always tell us stories about Guyanese folklore, Sudi Bill, Sensi Bill, Anansi, Kanaima, and I carried those stories with me. And then being in Trinidad, I saw that the designers would use their folk folklore, whether it was Midnight Dancer or, you know, whichever character they choose, 
they would choose it to um, inspire stuff for a carnival, for collections, for anything that they were working on. And, you know, I thought that was pretty dope. How can I bring awareness to my industry and also um, show light on what it is that we do here because I think a lot of people don't understand what fashion is and what a fashion industry is. A fashion industry isn't just people making and creating garments. A fashion is industry is collective of photographers, hairstylists, makeup artists, writers, because you need people to retell your stories. Moonlight stories we're all connected to those stories. It doesn't matter our religion, socioeconomic background, or ethnicity. We all have some folklore character that we were brought up by. I felt that that could connect us all and unite us all and kind of make us feel, um, have this sense of pride in Guyanese-ness. And I've always said that if I was allowed to do this, I would want to collaborate with other designers that in order for this industry to grow and move forward, it has to be a collective. It just can't be one person. One person really can't move a mountain. But if we work together, then, you know, we can make a difference. You find that here in Guyana, it is sometimes seen as a bad thing to support and use local um, people in the industry. So for me, for this show, I wanted to work with everyone. So we have photographers, makeup artists, videographers, um, the model trainers from here, all the models are from here, all the designers are from Guyana. Because I feel like we need to show the talent we have. I, I, I'd love for this show to be an annual one. Fashion isn't all glamour. It's 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 not just oh photo shoots and runways and you know display nice clothes and people wear nice clothes. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of commitment and a lot of discipline to your craft. In order to get better at anything that you do, you must practice. I don't believe in saying practice makes perfect because in my eyes there's no such thing as perfection but i see improvement everywhere so if you do the work you will improve sometimes you may start out and you might have one customer or two i remember the days when like in a whole month i only have two customers but i was consistent and persistent in improving my craft and showing people that i was talented and there may be people out there who may not believe you, um, believe in you, and say that you're not talented because I've heard that as well. But you just need one person, and most importantly, belief in yourself. And that will pave the way. It's gonna be long, long nights because being an entrepreneur and working for yourself is not easy. Most importantly, learn how to sew. If you learn how to sew, you're gonna reduce your costs significantly, especially in the beginning. Don't be afraid to reach out to designers. Don't be afraid. Some may answer, some may not, but don't let that deter you. When I got to Trinidad, one of the first thing I did was reached out to Mailing, who is one of the biggest Caribbean designers and one of the biggest designers in Trinidad. She's been in the in industry for over 40 years and she's still relevant. And But I felt, even though I'd done so much myself, that there was something that I could learn from her. And I didn't think that I was too big to learn it, right? And um, I think when you open yourself to learning, you will be filled with so much.